In this presentation, we'll talk about what is ADHD briefly, when to seek an evaluation for ADHD, why you'd want to get an evaluation, and who's qualified to diagnose ADHD, what you should expect in the ADHD evaluation, and how do you find an evaluator. So first, what is ADHD? ADHD is a neurodevelopmental disorder, and what that means is that there's something different about the brains of people with ADHD, and it's a disorder that starts in childhood. Also, it changes how it presents when one matures. So over different ages, you may see different symptoms more prominently. When one is young, you tend to see more hyperactivity for those with the hyperactive type, but inattention tends to stay steady through much of uh, childhood and adolescence, and sometimes even in adulthood. There are three different types of ADHD. There is a predominantly inattentive presentation, which some people refer to as ADD, but we no longer use that name. There's also the predominantly hyperactive impulsive presentation, where you don't see the symptoms of inattention, but it's really focused on the hyperactivity and people who have a hard time controlling their impulsive. Then there's individuals who have both the hyperactive, impulsivity, and the inattentive symptoms, and that's called the combined presentation. So when should you seek an evaluation for ADHD? Well, when people have brought up pers persistent issues, whether it be a teacher or friends or yourself in regard to ADHD symptoms, so problems with attention, hyperactivity, or impulsivity, perhaps if there's a family history of ADHD or learning disabilities, and these symptoms exist. And also, if you have some concern about other symptoms like depression, or anxiety or learning disabilities, and you can't tell if it's really ADHD or it might be those issues, or maybe both. Also, it's really critical that you're starting to see these problems across environments. So it's not just at home, it's not just at school, but you see it in both situations. So why would you get an evaluation for your child for ADHD? Ultimately, it's really to better understand your child, the symptoms that are occurring, and really, as a parent, what you can do to help. That's the primary reason that individuals go in for evaluations for their children. Some schools also require that there's written documentation of the diagnosis in order to deliver services. So who is qualified to diagnose the disorder? Medical professionals are, and some clinical professionals. In regard to medical professionals, those with the most training are pediatricians, developmental and behavioral pediatricians in particular, psychiatrists, particularly child psychiatrists, and neurologists as well. Some nurse practitioners also have specific training for ADHD. In terms of clinical professionals, clinical psychologists, neuropsychologists, marriage and family therapists, social workers, or licensed educational psychologists also have training. But you should really have a heart-to-heart -heart discussion with these individuals to see if they have particular strength with people with ADHD. School psychologists oftentimes have a lot of experience of working with children with ADHD. Many also have specialized training in how to evaluate ADHD, but it may vary greatly from one to the next. So you should really have a good discussion to see whether or not the individual who's evaluating your child has experience working with ADHD and, and is comfortable with it. Many school districts may help you in terms of implementing recommendations and even doing the testing, but school psychologists frequently are not actually allowed to make the diagnosis. You need to check with your school district and the school psychologist to determine what they are permitted to do in regard to diagnosis. So let's talk about who's not qualified to diagnose ADHD. There are professionals who are not trained in mental health diagnoses, such as occupational therapists, speech pathologists, and behavior analysts. Also, unlicensed professionals, such as teachers, tutors, or life coaches, do not have the proper training. Similarly, your neighbor, your uncle, and talk show hosts oftentimes, most likely, will not have the proper qualifications to diagnose ADHD, even though they may have an opinion on whether or not your child has it. So let's talk about how ADHD is evaluated. There's no blood test out there. Instead, what we need to do at this point, we really look at behaviors, and we have lots of ways that we do that. There's two types of evaluations. There's a screening evaluation for ADHD, and then there's what we call a more thorough, in-depth assessment of the disorder. A screening for ADHD might include interviews, briefly with the parent, and brief checklists from teachers and parents about your child's behavior. After the screening, you might decide that you want to pursue further evaluation or it might be that the results of the screening suggest that this is not an appropriate evaluation for your child. So when you're trying to determine who should do the evaluation, you need to consider what you want the outcomes to be. If you're trying to confirm what you already know, if you're trying to determine what might be driving the behavior, 
if you're looking for medication to be prescribed for the disorder or if you're really just seeking behavioral support. It might really also be that you need formal documentation of the diagnosis for the schools. So let's talk about what you should expect in the screening for ADHD. It will be relatively short, it's typically done by your pediatrician. It can tell you frequently if there are atypical behaviors present that need to be considered more thoroughly. And it might be a quick way to get a formal diagnosis and medication prescribed. But there are drawbacks to just having a screening. Primarily, it's not going to tell you why these behaviors are present. It's also not going to help you rule out some, so many other reasons why these behaviors may be contributing to problems for your child. And it's possible that there could be overdiagnosis in your situation and your child may be prescribed therapy or medication that really isn't indicated. So the other opportunity is to go for a really thorough assessment for ADHD. And when you go for that, you expect to give a much more in-depth interview where you review your child's developmental and health history. You also expect to have rating scales completed by parents and teachers and perhaps an interview by your teachers as well. There should be some direct behavioral observation of your child and two types of rating scales will be completed. Should, these should be some broad-based scales looking not just ADHD, but lots of other symptoms and potential diagnoses that might explain their behavior or be co-occurring with the ADHD, as well as very narrow, specific uh, rating scales that really hone in on the ADHD. It might also be that the assessment includes a measurement of your child's intelligence, achievement or academic performance, and there might be some computerized testing of attention, persistence, memory, or what we call executive functioning. But these are going to vary dramatically depending upon what your child's needs are, and this should really be determined by a qualified evaluator. What you should expect also from the end of an in-depth evaluation is that you'll receive a report. This report is going to summarize your experience with the evaluator, and include information on the health history, educational history of your child. It should also include the scores that were obtained from the test, an interpretation of those scores, and whether or not there's actually a diagnosis of ADHD and perhaps something else instead. Most importantly, these reports should include recommendations, and these recommendations should be very specific to your child, although there are some more general recommendations that are useful for ADHD. So what's the benefits of an in-depth evaluation? An in-depth evaluation is going to also look at whether there are other reasons for why your child is behaving the way your child is and what other challenges could be contributing either at the moment or in, in the past to why your child is acting in a particular way. It will also give you a lot more information in terms of identifying what are the best educational interventions or behavioral interventions that can be done at home or school. And this documentation of the issues can really be helpful for others in the future in the determining what sorts of opportunities and recommendations they have and accommodations to meet your child's needs. So what are the drawbacks of an assessment? It's going to take more time on your child's part and yours as well, typically several appointments. It's likely going to be much more expensive and sometimes it might be covered by insurance but not always and your child might be a little bit less enthusiastic about having to participate in multiple appointments. Some children, however, really enjoy the experience and they like the one-on-one -on -one attention that they're receiving. So how do you find an evaluator? Oftentimes your schools can recommend somebody. Your medical or insurance provider also has typically a list of people who can provide this sort of evaluation. University assessment clinics for psychology programs as well as university hospitals where they have training in psychiatry will also, ha also have clinics for general child psychiatry as well as specialized ADHD clinics. You can also Google search for private practice evaluators, but you have to be careful about that because there are some people out there who will say that they have experience and yet they may not meet our criteria. CHAD is also a support organization that has a list of names typically in your local area and you should definitely seek out their website to see if they have recommendations for psychologists, psychiatrists, or others who have expertise in evaluating ADHD. I hope this answers your questions about assessment of ADHD in childhood.